Okay, this is Mac 1105. We are still in section 1.5 and where the last video left off, we were trying to factor um, this second problem, 2x squared plus 7x equals 4. I had already factored it by the guess and check method and now I was going on to demonstrate another method for dealing with um, a quadratic trinomial where the leading coefficient is bigger than 1. So we had gotten into this method called splitting the middle term and we had gotten to this part where we found two numbers that multiply to give the a times c value but yet added to give us the b value. And we had used these two numbers to rewrite this middle term. Instead of a 7x appearing, we now have rewritten that 7x as 8x, which we got this 8 from here, minus 1x. We got the minus 1 from here. We just put x's on those terms. We now have four terms, which could be factored by grouping. When you're factoring by grouping, you group two terms together at a time. So we would consider these two terms and what common factor do they have that we can pull out, ignoring these ter terms right now. So what these two terms have in common is 2x. So we could take out 2x, put a single parenthesis next to it whenever you are pulling out a common factor and ask yourself, what do I multiply this by to, to get this term back again? Which would be x. What do I multiply this by to get that term back again? and that would be x plus 4. Then you forget about these terms, move to the back two terms, considering even, you know, the signs in front of them just like we did here. So when I look at just those two terms, what do they have in common? Nothing other than the negative 1 multiplier that's in front of both of them. So I'll pull that out as the common factor. Always put a single parenthesis next to it. And again, whatever you pull out as the common factor, ask yourself, what can I multiply that by to get back this term as well as this one? So what can you multiply negative 1 by to get back negative x? x. What can you multiply negative 1 by to get back negative 4? Positive 4. And if you do remember the method of factor by grouping, it then goes on to where you're looking at this as a first term and a second term. You're looking at this as two terms and asking yourself once again, what do they have in common? So it's like you're pulling out a GCF three times. You're pulling one out for the first two terms, which was 2x. You're pulling out another GCF for the back two terms, which was negative 1. And now you're looking at this as two terms. What do they have in common? The x plus 4. And then when we go in the second parenthesis are these GCFs that you pulled out. Notice that you get the same result as when I um, just factored this in the last video by the guess and check method. I ended up getting 2x minus 1 in, in one of my parentheses, same thing here, and I ended up getting x plus 4 in the other parenthesis. The only difference is in this method you know, it has different steps, and obviously you're splitting the middle term in one method, but not in the other. And you're not using foiling to check what you're guessing on for splitting things up. So a different method altogether, but it does result in the same, the same factors. And then you would go on, of course, to make equations out of each one of these and get the solution. So you're going to have to decide what you are more comfortable with and then go from there. Many students like splitting the middle term. Again, that's your personal preference. Both have been demonstrated. Okay, moving to the next problem. Where this time we only have two terms because quadratic equations can come with only two terms. So in this particular problem, um, you cannot use guess and check, nor can you use splitting the middle term. Those methods are for three terms. When you get to something like this, you see that there is a common term. Remember, the goal is to try and bring the equation down from second degree down to first degree factors. So if you simply notice that both of these have a common factor of x, you should always pull out the common factor first if one exists before you go on to anything else that might apply. 
Um, so I'm going to take out an X. Both of these have at least one X in it. And every time you pull out a GCF, you then follow that by asking yourself, what can I multiply this GCF by to get back this term as well as this term? So that would be 7X. This times this is 7X squared. And then what can I multiply that GCF by to get back the second term, which would be negative 5. And the moment that you pull out that GCF and then complete the terms that are required here, you see that you have two first degree factors. And as soon as that happens, you're ready to create your two separate equations. So this variable that you pulled out, this in and of itself creates an equation. You create the equations by the zero factor property where you take each factor. This is a factor. It was the greatest common factor. This is a factor. And you create equations out of each of those factors. And then you continue working them until you have the solutions. So we already have one built-in solution, x equal to 0. But then the 7x minus 5 needs to be worked further in order to get a solution out of it. First by moving negative 5 to the right-hand side. Then by dividing by 7 so that you end up getting x is equal to 5 sevenths because that would cancel and you would then have the 5 and the 7 over here. And that would be your solution set. The 0 would be an answer. 0 is a legitimate number. Don't throw it out just because you get that for an answer. And you would have 5 sevenths for the other answer. Okay, so then let's go to the next problem. which is 6x squared plus 5x minus 6. Now these numbers and coefficients are starting to get big. I'm going to demonstrate, um, let's see, I'm going to demonstrate, I guess, both met methods for this one. So if you like the guess and check method, that means that you're going to be trying to think of different ways to split up the 6x squared which could be 6x times x, or it could be 3x times 2x until you get it right, which would may mean some erasing and going back to other choices that work better because you're not going to know at the beginning what's going to work the best. I mean, you'll have some hunches, but you're not going to know for sure what works best. So let's say that we do decide to guess that maybe it's we're going to we should split the 6x the 6x squared up as 3x times 2x. We would go like that. Then we need to think of a way to split up the back six. And again, that could be six times one. It could also be three times two. If you do end up going with, um, let's say, three times two, then multiplying, putting the three here, which the three could either go here or it could go here. So that's where the guessing part comes in. Now, if you're really good with the foiling method, you're going to guess much more quickly than someone who's not good with the foiling method. Um, so I'm thinking already about foiling as I'm deciding where these numbers go. I know that if I make this a positive 3, part of what I do when I foil will give me a 9x, but then I need this middle term to come back down to 5x, so I could make this a negative. That, that's what brings a number down from what's being created through the foiling process. So let's check this out. 3x times 3 would give you 9x. I mean, we already know that 3x times 2x is 6x squared. 3x times 3 would be 9x, but then part of that middle term also comes from this. So that would get you 9x, but then this would be negative 4x, which would bring you back down to 5x. And then, of course, this last term times this last term gives you that. So this checks out. But your guesses are as good as your ability to foil to check that you have put things in the um, proper place. So that's up to you if you want to try that guess and check method. There it is all factored. If you decide that you like um, splitting the middle term, I'll demonstrate that way also because both of them are going to get you these same two factors. So this was guess and check where I was guessing at how to split this up to put in the front two positions. 
and how to split the negative six up to put in the back two positions. If you're doing splitting the middle term, then the process would start like this. You'd be looking for two numbers that when multiplied together give you the A times C value. The A is 6, the C value is negative 6. So A times C would be negative 36. But then these two numbers, whatever two numbers you're going to say multiply to give you negative 36, they have to also add up to give you the B value. The B value is 5. Okay, easy enough to find those two numbers. They would be uh, 9 and 4. 9 times 4 is, now we've got to put the negative on, on the proper number. You get to figure out who gets the negative and who gets the positive with this second step right here. So let's see, if I was going to use 9 and 4 and I want the addition of these to be positive 5, bigger number has to be positive while the smaller number is negative. 9 plus negative 4 is equal to 5. And 9 times negative 4 also when give you a negative 36. So those are the two numbers that would split up the middle term for us if you're going to use this method. Okay, so splitting the middle term, you would have 6x squared. But instead of the middle term that you see right here, 5x, it would be rewritten using the 9 and the negative 4. So 9x, negative 4x, and then there's that last term of negative 6. Stretching this quadratic trinomial into four terms, which is now appropriate um, for factor by grouping. So if you group these two together and ask what do they have in common, 3 divides into both of those, and they both have at least 1x. So you could pull out a 3x, <clears throat> put one parenthesis next to it, and ask yourself, what do I multiply 3x by to get back 6x squared? That would be 2x. What do I multiply 3x by to get the 9x back? That would be positive 3. And then once you're factoring the first two terms, group the back two terms and ask what do these have in common and also consider these signs notice that negative 2 divides into both of these it divides into this it divides they both have a negative in common and 2 divides into both of them so negative 2 would be the GCF put a parenthesis next to it and ask yourself what do I multiply negative 2 by to get back negative 4x so that would be 2x what do I multiply negative 2 by to get back this negative 6? Positive 3. So I've taken a GCF out of the front two terms. I've taken a GCF out of the back two terms. And now one more time, take a GCF out. What this term has in common with this term is 2x plus 3. And then what goes in the second parenthesis to complete that factoring would be the GCFs that you pulled out, 3x and negative 2. In any event, whether you decide to use guess and check or whether you decide to use splitting the middle term, notice that the factors come out the same. This had a 2x plus 3 when we factored it using guess and check. This had a 2x plus 3. <laughs> This one had 3x minus 2. This one had 3x minus 2. Okay, again, comments are, if you're going to use guess and check, you have to be good at foiling to, so that when you mentally foil, you understand um, whether or not these numbers are working where you place them. If you're going to use splitting the middle term, you will not be using foiling to check that out. Although you, in the middle, I'm talking about in the middle of the problem, here you're using the foiling in the middle of the problem as you place numbers in certain positions. You can always use foiling towards the end of the problem to check out whether you have factored it properly. But we've already established that when you foil this out, it does work, so, and this is the same answer. Again, now if you wanted to take this all the way to where you're getting solutions from it, um, that happens after you get it factored, whether you use this method or not. So I'm going to finish here by finding the solutions. So we need a solution for this. So 3x minus 2 
is equal to 0. We'd have to bring that 2 to the other side, which would give us 3x is equal to 2, and ultimately divide that 